Hello everybody, my name is Haru. Welcome to this video on FCFS CPU scheduling. This is an operating system algorithm for CPU scheduling. It is a very, very straightforward algorithm, possibly the simplest algorithm. So we're going to be looking at the concept, uh, working out uh, an example, then we'll move on to the code. Again, I'm saying this is a very simple algorithm. It just depends on one factor, one factor alone, that is always prioritize the process which came first okay and this is a non preemptive algorithm because it's first come first serve so we are just going to sort the process with the arrival time take the first process process it and then the second process so the only major thing is first come first serve that is it so first come first serve meaning the process with the lowest arrival times will be given the first priority okay and this is a non preemptive uh, algorithm so it will not be interrupted so let's just work out with an example here we have a set of process their burst times and their arrival times this ms is not really important but uh, you know if you want you can uh, take that as well but uh, for the sake of this example we're just going to be dealing with numbers now and not any units so that it's better for you guys to understand right so uh, at t is equal to zero what are the processes that are available now, when you look at it, uh, we, we know that P4, right, uh, arrives at T is equal to 0, it's arrival time. So, that is the first process, which means uh, P4 is going to be from 0 uh, to 3, as I said, first come, first serve, and it's non preemptive. So, P4 will be first executed. Okay. So, now at T is equal to 3, right, what is the second process that's arriving? It's P3 comes at T1 and then followed by P1 at arrival time 2. First come, first serve, obviously going to prioritize the process which came first so p3 will be next executed until it ends so that will be 11 right again followed by this process p1 which arrives next so that will be until its burst time so that's 17 followed by p5 correct with because it arrives at t4 uh, p2 arrives at t5 so um, so p5 again uh, its entirety so that will be 21 followed by p correct and to 23 so this is how this works if you go ahead and uh, probably calculate the uh, completion time turnaround time and the waiting time for all five process so we have p1 p2 uh, p3 p4 and p5 i'm just going to go and calculate one you guys can do the rest we'll just take some random process here say we'll take p3 uh, p3's completion time is 11 okay so completion time is 11 turnaround time is given by completion time minus arrival time so that is 11 minus its arrival time of p3 which is 1 so will be 10 uh, waiting time will be the uh, turnaround time minus the burst time so here turnaround time is 10 burst time is 8 so waiting time is 2 okay uh, that is what it means so waiting time basically means that whenever the process came to when it ended for in this case it came uh, at time interval uh, at time 1 it ended at it should actually end at time 9 if cpu does not wait but it's actually ending at time 11 so it's waiting for two milliseconds here so i think you can go ahead and fill the rest of the table we can go and see what the code is like so we've opened uh, visual studio code here i've created a file called fcfs.py so we're going to be dealing with the first come first serve cp shedding scheduling algorithm so we're going to represent the process by a list and this list will contain the process burst time uh, the arrival time uh, or wait actually it should contain the arrival time correct burst time uh, followed by the PID okay so this is how we are going to be uh, storing one process and one process obviously is this table right here so P1 would be uh, 2 6 and P1 okay so that's the format we're going to be saving this so let's just go ahead and create a, a function called FCFS which takes a process list as an input okay um, let's just create pass so that we can go ahead and give an input so that we know what we're working with okay uh, if name is equal to equal to main uh, let's go ahead and create a process list so as i said how we're creating this is we're going to do uh, 2 6 p1 5 2 p2 so like that so so 2 6 sorry uh, yeah 2 6 p1 uh, so this is going to be one process entry i'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of the table and we can move with that Right, so I've gone ahead and filled this process list with all these values over here in this particular format. We can go ahead and call the FCFS function on this process list. Obviously, it does nothing now because it's just a pass, right? So, right, with that in mind, now let's work on the function. So, first of all, we need to create some things, which is the time, to note down what the time is, uh, and then a Gantt chart, 
and then followed by a completed dictionary which will keep track of all the process completion turnaround time and the waiting time okay uh, so first of all what are we going to do let's so since this is first come first serve it is imperative that we just sort the process by its arrival time right because we are arranging the process in this way also if we just call the sort method obviously the first process is going to come then the second process the third process fourth process so on and so forth uh, so that is why I am telling you to arrange it this way. So this will change with every CPU algorithm. I think if you watch the videos, you'll probably understand if you're going forward. So we're just going to sort it, right? And then we're going to loop uh, this process list until it is empty. This is because once a process is completed, we'll pop that from the process list. So once all the processes are completed, uh, we no longer have a, a process list, which means the process is empty, okay? so. What we're going to do here is, first of all, we're going to check if the current time is greater than equal to um, the process list's first element, okay? Process list's first element. See, since we're sorting this by its ascending order, uh, we are basically neglecting a scenario where, uh, let's say, instead of uh, P4 here being arrival time 0, let's say that also has an arrival time 1, okay? So, at T is equal to 0, there's no process. But when we sort the process, we get uh, P4 first and the, the arrival time, burst time will be 1, 3 and P4, right? So this is obviously greater than this value, which means at that particular time, there are no available processes for that uh, CPU to be handled. So CPU will be idle for that particular second. So that case is a boundary condition. That's what we're actually dealing with here. So if the time is greater than the process list of 0 or uh, we can even frame this a bit better if the process list's time is greater than the current time. So this means we can just go ahead and increase the time by 1 and continue okay or we can go ahead to create an else condition here else is not needed when you're doing continue but we're doing it anyways. We'll just go ahead and pop so current process will be just uh, process list dot pop of 0 okay so this will be the process that we are going to be servicing currently we can go ahead add this process to the uh, gantt chart so process of uh, 2 will be the pid okay so now uh, time we can increase this time by the burst time burst time is going to be process of 1 and then now we can go ahead and uh, maintain the completed uh, dictionary we can keep track when this process is being completed so process id is again uh, uh, pid is nothing but process of 2 Completion time is given by the current time. The th this time is already added with the burst time. So we know the time right now, T right now, is when the process ends, finishes. Okay, so that will be the CT. The TT will be given by what? CT minus the arrival time. Arrival time is given by process of 0. Okay, and then what do we give? WT. WT is nothing but turnaround time minus the burst time. The burst time of the process is given by process of 1. Once this is done, we can go ahead and create an entry in the completed dictionary. Uh, let's just uh, make the key value to be the PID and then the values being CT, TT and WT, okay. So once all of this is done, we can go ahead and again in this particular condition when the CPU is idle, we can go ahead and say uh, uh, the CPU is idle, okay, um, idle, okay. So once this is done, we can go ahead and print the Gantt chart and then print the completed dictionary. So this, yeah. I think this is outside the loop. So everything is right. I think this should work. Uh, okay. So it says uh, not supported between instances of list and int. Okay. So one error we are doing here that is process list of zero is going to be a process which is going to be this list. We only need the arrival time of the process. So which means we are iterating. I mean we are checking a nested list. So this is going to be a process in that we need the zeroth index which is the arrival time. So that is going to be 0 of 0. I think uh, rest is right. So I'm just going to go and clear the terminal so you can you guys can see it a bit better. Right. So idle P4, P3, P1, P5, P2. Okay. So that is what we're getting right now uh, is greater than equal to T. Right. Sorry. I don't think uh, equal to should come only if it's greater than. Okay. Because if equal to comes, that means at the 0 second, let's say there's another process uh, which arrives at 0. It'll, the system will still be idle because 0 is equal to 0. We are only seeing processes which are greater. So let's say the arrival time is 2 and the current time is 0. 
So the arrival time is strictly greater. It should not be equal to. If it's equal to, we'll obviously get the idle case. So we can go ahead and run. We can see we get the Gantt chart is P4, P3, P1, P5, P2. Uh, if we go ahead and see P4, P3, P1, P5, P2. So the Gantt chart is right. Let's just go ahead and check uh, this table. Uh, we'll just check this value. So P3 should be CT11, 10, 2. If we go back P3, uh, 11, 10, 2. So which means our uh, both completion uh, uh, dictionary and the Gantt chart is right. You guys want to see another a case where this boundary condition is triggered. Let's say at 0 second, no process available. Uh, so if we run here, you can see at the 0 second, the CPU is idle. Then we follow this particular order. So since we're changing stuff here, uh, obviously these values will also be changed. But this by itself is the FCFS CPU scheduling algorithm. If you guys want to uh, print this a bit better, you can iterate through this particular dictionary and then put it into a table or anything like that. But this is a very, very simple straightforward algorithm. We're just sorting the process, taking it one by one, checking this particular boundary condition. I think this is the only thing that you need to remember uh, to add into your code. Except that very, very straightforward. The code to it obviously will be given down in the description in the GitHub uh, uh, repository if you guys want it for reference. My suggestion is to watch this video and implement it on your own. I think this is a very straightforward algorithm. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want more videos, I probably have more on this particular series. You can go ahead. The playlist will be in the description. But except that, if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button. It will be helpful for me. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Bye.